Good morning, fellow travelers. It is the last day of the cruise, day 10, on Enchanted Princess. And I am wandering around the ship, making sure I've explored every nook and cranny. And that's pretty much what my day looks like. There is actually a culinary demonstration coming up at about 10. There is something else going... Oh, there's line dancing, which I thought I'd go and watch at the very least coming up. I think it's at 11 and then I'm not sure what else for the rest of the day but I'm going to manage to maybe take a dip in the pool before I go to. is my favorite because it has that lovely plug down there so I can work on my laptop. Is it? Hmm. Could I get um? Could I get a, a scoop of the tiramisu? A cup? Yeah, that would be fine. I was going to say, what are your toppings here? For the toppings, we have uh, coconut shredded, chocolate chips, cookie crumble, lady fingers, brown, and cherry. We also have sauces like chocolate, caramel, or Nutella. Mm. Let's have a little Nutella sauce. That sounds good. Not much, though. I think I have plenty of calories there already. <laughs> If it will cooperate anyway. It says, no, I don't want to come out. <laughs> so I'm just wondering what the social life is like going through and do like shipboard romances and Shipboard romances. <laughs> I didn't realize you were interested. <laughs> okay, yeah, so uh, we get asked this a lot as well. Um, so obviously, uh, fraternizing with the guests is not allowed these days. You know, the days of the love boat are over. I don't know how the doctor did it, but, uh, but yeah, we can't do that anymore. Um, but between uh, crew members, of course we can't. I was going to say it's encouraged, but that's a weird way of putting it. But it's, uh, uh, we are allowed to date other crew members. In fact, you, you wouldn't be allowed to stop that, really. I mean, you know, for us, really, this is our life. We're here for more of the year than we're at home. Uh, so we do have to meet... Uh, people and romances definitely do happen. Um, there's uh, um, a few married couples on board, for example, that may be from different departments, but yeah, you might find that out. And they come from different countries, and it's quite romantic that they do that. Um, but they uh, uh, they actually help you out a little bit as well, princess. So if you do find someone you like, um, they, relationships on board they are very intense. They happen very quickly. So like if you if you can meet someone and be in love by Wednesday, 
and then by Friday, you've already broken up. But you are now def you're defined by that person you're with forever. So it's, it's a very fast uh, process. It, the best way to explain it is it's kind of like college. It's a little bit like that, because, but we're all stuck together in the same, same ship. Um, but anyway, Princess can help you out because there's a form you can fill out. If you find someone that you do like, you can link your contract so that they'll try their best to move you together. So if you are a, a, a coupling, they can do that. They, they do have some rules, and these are real rules, and everyone laughs when I say them. You're not allowed to link with someone if you're already married to someone else. So Princess obviously cares about, uh, you know, not cheating on your spouse, I suppose. Uh, and uh, secondly, if you, if you, if it doesn't go well and you decide to unlink, you have to wait a certain time period before you can link with someone new. And the reason why they do that is because otherwise, otherwise people will be linking and unlinking all the time, and it gets very complicated. So you have to be certain you want to stay with this person, be with them, and then they'll uh, they'll do their best to move you together. Okay. Any questions, Anna? Is there a prison on the ship? What, <laughs> what are you guilty of? <laughs> Actually, it's a big uh, misconception uh, that we have a brig on board. In fact, uh, many guests have, uh, have argued with me that there is, even though I'm the one working here. But uh, there actually isn't a, a brig on board. Um, maybe on some cruise, sh cruise ships, if they're old enough. But uh, brigs are normally for like uh, military or navy vessels and things, you know. So, if we need to lock you up for any reason, uh, if you think about it, we just keep you in your room. So if you've done something incredibly naughty that's a danger to other people, we keep you in your room, we'll deliver you your food and we'll have security sat outside. That's all, that's all we need to do. So it'll be a very comfortable cell, but... Uh, <laughs> say it. Oh, you meant for the crew, if we've done something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, no. I mean, but I mean, the answer would be the same. You know, if they share a, share a room, and uh, we might have to find them a separate room that's by themselves or something. But uh, I don't think I've ever heard of heard of that happening before. Normally, we can spot when a crew member is up to mischief, and we uh, we load them into the cannon. <laughs> Send them home. <laughs> A hospital, a hospital on board. The hospital on board is, well, we call it the medical center. And it's the same medical center that you have. We just have the back door. So we, uh, uh, we have the same doctors and nurses. Um, and there is one doctor who normally is assigned to just look after the crew members. Um, but they, uh, uh, it, if one side's busier than the other, then obviously both doctors will sort of jump to either side. Um, but yeah, we don't have to pay for any medical stuff either, so if we need any prescriptions, it, even if we need to go to um, a doctor ashore, if it's something more serious than what they can do with here, it's, it's all taken care of whilst we're, whilst we're on the ship, so there's no extra charge. Do they have a morgue? Yes. Yeah, they do. Yeah. There's a, there, there is a morgue, it's, um, you know, same way that aeroplanes have, have them as well sometimes, although I did hear a fact the other day that not all aeroplanes have them. Um, and what they do is on some aeroplanes is they put that person in business class and put sunglasses on them and put a whiskey in their hands. So if you ever see someone like that on a plane and they're not moving, it could be that. Um, but no, we do, we do have, we, we do we do have a morgue obviously we would need to um but uh you know fingers crossed most of the time it's never it's never used except for you know when the doctors want to make jello shots or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh so this gentleman saw a crew member who was in entertainment working in the art auction we do allow um uh, what we call them part-time jobs as well so if you're if you happen to have a job where you've got some free time uh, then you can do some extra hours in different places on the ship. So if you want to earn a little bit of extra money, you can go and help out the art auction. Uh, the shopping show is another one. You may see some people there. Um, and even here, Oceanfront, this, uh, this area with all the medallions and things, sometimes you'll see musicians or um, singers or dancers working in there as well just to have a bit of a part-time job as well. Okay, any more questions? Hello. Do I have a what service? Aerial at sea. 
A burial at sea service. Oh my, my goodness, we went from morgues to burials already. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> uh, I have had I have had some uh, times where people have brought ashes on to then then do that, but there's a whole lot of paperwork and things that have to get involved with whichever water you're putting them in and things like that these days. But it is it is possible to do to do that, yeah. But burial at sea, I don't, I don't, I don't. I, you don't, you don't want that washing up in Curacao. But that's the... Hello fellow travelers, it is the end of day 10, the last day of the 10 day cruise on Enchanted Princess. It went by fast, and yet, you know, at the beginning of the cruise, this is the longest cruise I've been on, and it just felt like I had all this time stretching out ahead of me. And then you turn around and it's gone, where'd it go? I don't know, it probably still happens if you have like a two week or God forbid, a 30-day cruise, can you imagine? I can't. My dogs would not be pleased with me if I was gone that long anyway. Uh, what did I do today? So I did not go and see the culinary demonstration. I sort of got caught up in doing video editing and lost track of time. So there's this one spot at the back of the piazza that is a nice little chair and table, but the best part is that down on the floor, there's a power outlet. So I can sit there in the piazza and I can listen to the lovely entertainers, the musicians, while I'm working. And it's much more pleasant than sitting here in my cabin and editing video. So that that kind of was the place I camped out and it was the place where the, the people who were working that area all wound up knowing my name. <laughs> so it was fun to uh, to get to know some of them though that was that was very nice and what else did I do today let's see well I did manage to get to the cruise directors talk on what it's like to live on a cruise ship it was more it was mostly just a Q&A kind of format and he indicated that he he does this he started doing this years ago when uh you know, the idea came to him that he gets lots of questions and he thought maybe it would be fun for a session and it was uh, so popular that he's pretty much done it on every cruise that he's done since then. And it was popular this time too. So yeah, it's, it's clearly an area of interest. There were a lot of questions about how the contracts work and, you know, sort of the interpersonal workings on a ship shall we say and yeah it was it was an interesting talk and uh, I'm glad I got to go to that at least I did spend some time doing last-minute videotaping so when I plopped myself down on my favorite chair in the piazza I started doing video editing for the first look short videos that by the time this video actually publishes you will have already seen most, if not all of them. No, you should definitely have seen all of them. And it was just to sort of, you know, focus on one venue and give a first look at what that particular venue is so that people who were, you know, thinking about going on Enchanted Princess could get an idea of what it actually looks like. I mean, you see some of the videos from before, like a year or so ago, and you just don't know if it's the same still unless you actually, you know, watch something that's a bit more current and so that was why I wanted to sort of get those out quickly. So I managed to crank out about 15 of them so I'm kind of happy with that as a, a productive day um, on my cruise but uh, yeah it was good to get that done and I have been packing and tying up any loose ends and errands I had to do. It gets to the point where I just have to put in my phone 
what it is so I don't forget it because there's too many things to keep track of. And I had to reread the disembarkation directions again just to make sure I was, you know, remembering them correctly. And so I've got one of my bags out. Probably it's been taken again by now. You were supposed to put it out before dinner, but I didn't read that part until after dinner. I'm sure that it's fine. I mean, it's it's usually on other cruise lines, it's like before 11 o'clock. So I'm going to have to do my last routine stuff and then finish packing this last one and get it out there and remember to have a change of clothes and all the things I need for my morning routine. I do have an airport transfer. I will be doing a, a disembarkation video and uh, if it's anything like embarkation was for this, it's going to be a snap. So I have high hopes for that. So I, I fly home tomorrow, right? And then I have one day to turn everything around, do all of my laundry, restock everything. And then the next day, I am stepping onto the Ruby Princess. It is leaving out of San Francisco and I believe we are going to like San Diego and Ensenada. And so it does help soften the blow of this cruise ending, knowing that I have another one really soon. So I have that to look forward to and all the craziness that it's going to entail trying to get ready for another cruise that quickly. I don't know what I was thinking when I booked this, but we'll make it work. It's not going to please my dogs, I can tell you that much. Anyway, um, looking forward to that. This was a wonderful cruise. The crew was excellent. Everything was really nice. I totally recommend this ship. And yeah, come on, take this cruise if you, uh, if you can. Solo Sue signing off.